question I have is uh, about potential side effects of the keto diet and the people who may be at risk when trying a ketogenic diet. Yeah, so the ketogenic diet, does it, it's not a, a therapy without risk. So there is a risk to doing the ketogenic diet. And that's important message to convey. And it's, it's very important message to like families that are using the ketogenic diet for their kids, for epilepsy and things like that. Um, so some of the things that come up in the literature, if you do it, is it decreases the growth in children. So this was primarily due to the protein restriction. So now I'm, I'm, I have chair, the, Ameri the uh, American Epilepsy Society has a special interest group called SIG uh, with dietary therapies. And I've chaired that in the past uh, for several years. And this topic comes up and, uh, and there's much discussion about it, but we know that we can be actually more liberal with protein. Instead of 8% protein, we can increase that to 10, 12, and even 15%. And in some cases use a modified Atkins diet with upwards of 20 to even 30% protein and still maintain a state of ketosis. There's a science and an art to doing this, but a, a classical ketogenic diet will lower insulin so much it lowers IGF-1. And this has resulted, we think in some cases in children not achieving their terminal height. Uh, although I would like to add that the, we work very close with the Charlie Foundation. So Jim Abrams is a Hollywood producer and his son, Charlie, uh, had drug resistant epilepsy and he responded very well to the ketogenic diet. And, uh, and a movie was made to highlight his therapy with Meryl Streep. So Meryl Streep did a movie about the ketogenic diet called First Do No Harm. And it was sort of to highlight the story of Charlie. So Charlie towers over me. He's like 6'3 or 6'4. He followed a low protein ketogenic diet and grew taller than, you know, both of his parents. So you know, there are exceptions to the rule. So they make a big deal about how it's going to stunt the growth of kids. But I, I don't, I've never seen like really conclusive evidence of that. There is evidence of, of, of uh, kidney stones. So early versions of the ketogenic diet, when you put someone on the ketogenic diet, you restrict their fluids to 80, about 80% 80 of water restriction. I don't know why they did this, but they saw that the idea was that you would get higher ketones if you restrict fluids. And this was like a common practice for many years in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, and 90s to restrict water. And then there was about a five times increase in kidney stones. Uh, although now we know that, you know, you can, you should be hydrating as much as possible. You should uh, supplement with electrolytes. Uh, you tend to decrease a lot of potassium, sodium, and calcium, the calcium from bones, you have a mild metabolic acidosis and the pH of your urine becomes a little bit more acidic. And then that prevents solubilization of uric acid. And that creates something that the calcium can bind to and create stones. But if you supplement with potassium citrate that neutralizes the urine in a way that can prevent the kidney stones. So electrolytes are really important and actually sodium. So we demonize sodium, but actually you need to get like a lot of extra sodium when you initiate a ketogenic diet, and that will help alkalinize your body, offset the acidosis, and actually prevent many of the keto flu symptoms. So when we go on a ketogenic diet, you suppress the hormone mm -hmm. insulin, and that has a diuretic effect, but it also has a naturetic effect. A naturetic effect means that your body dumps a lot of sodium, and with sodium, your fluid levels will drop and you will become hypovolemic. So your the plasma, there'll be a contraction of the plasma volume and that will decrease brain blood flow. It can, and you can get a headache and then circulation, you get orthostatic hypotension and things like that. So it's really important to increase your sodium, to increase your electrolytes and increase your fluid when you initiate a ketogenic diet. And that can mitigate many of the side effects. So there's fat intolerance, there's, you know, the clinicians say vomiting, nausea, diarrhea, 
fat intolerance, constipation, but all these things are typically, you know, the first week or two during the initiation of the ketogenic diet. And then people adapt to the high fat intake over time. And, uh, but the long-term ones that come up are, you know, the kidney stones, the growth in kids as a growth, uh, but we think with higher protein, that's a non-issue. And the biggest issue that comes up is changes in lipid profile. So the LDL cholesterol and uh, triglycerides usually in kids, sometimes they increase or decrease depending on the type of ketogenic diet. But the biggest um, discussion right now with ketogenic diets is an elevation in LDL cholesterol. And we do not know what this means in the context of a ketogenic diet, but it's being studied and it's being investigated and you need an NMR lipid profile to understand the different, the different lipid subfractions to understand if it's atherogenic or benign. So that's sort of a, a quick overview <laughs> of some of the potential side effects and concerns that some doctors may have with the ketogenic diet. Thank you for providing this wonderful summary, Dom. I, uh, I think, uh, yes, the, the, con the key concept here is that the ketogenic diet is a, is a different metabolic state. And in this context, yeah. traditional risk factors such as LDL might, might have a different effect on our physiology and might be not so concerning. And that's why we need yeah. more uh, um, in-depth testing in these cases. We also see in, uh, in uh, our studies, we are now running a, a small pilot uh, with a, a traditional, well-formulated ketogenic diet versus a more Mediterranean low-carb diet. And we see the same mild elevation in LDL but we didn't perform in-depth LDL testing. And so, yeah. we, but we, at the same time, we see a beneficial greater decrease of triglycerides on the, uh, on the keto diet, which, you know, uh, uh, triglycerides are also um, uh, like very important actually in, in affecting how bad or good an LDL particle is. And so when we see that uh, triglycerides uh, go down, this is a, a, a good indication that uh, the, mm -hmm. the LDL might be of a, a better kind. But anyway, context uh, is, is key. Very important, yeah. So LDL, yeah. particle size, particle number, uh, uh, you know, LP little a, uh, you know, your, your insulin level is very important, your glycemic control, the HSC reactive protein, you know, your inflammation markers. Uh, I mean, there's, you have to look at it in the context of other, other biomarkers, which is very not, you cannot, even the statin, even the literature on the drugs to lower LDL basically say not to prescribe this drug uh, in the context of, you know, it, it as a single biomarker, you have to view it in the context of other biomarkers. If you want to bring the science of food as medicine into your kitchen, check out my new course on diet and gene expression at dotoraronica.com or using the link below this video. I hope to see you there.